So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is a live stream with live people, but it is very early in the UK. So um, I'm just recording this so that I can uh, kind of get on a bit. I bought the aviary and the um, menagerie and the aquarium. And I was trying to put the colours in my little book. And I love the Dr. Martin's Hydras. Um, and they look a bit messy, but they're in there. So anything that you can stop taking 18 bottles out and just have the colour with you. Um, they are a little bit sticky, but they're in there and they will eventually dry. But there is a lot of colour in the Dr. Martin's Hydras. And as I say, this is the, uh, the bottle. So I have a drop of each colour on here. And I've been a bit tidier than I've labelled them, so I know next time when this kind of I wipe this off, I can put another drop of each colour, and it just keeps it that little bit um, semblance of order. And the same with this. This is just um, because I've shut the book, and there was some quite large drops in here. The first, the first one I did, I used. Uh, I to be a bit careful because I have a pint pot of tea this morning. This is mine, but there's still tons of colour on here. I didn't really want to wipe it away. So I keep dibbing in there till it's all gone. Tight Yorkshire Lass. Can't bear just to wipe that away. You can if you want to, but I couldn't bear to do that. And what it does, the Dr. Martin's Hydrus lets you, I'm just going to shut that and put it away, lets you kind of really get some really bright colours, which is not normally like me. And I really love these bright colours. Uh, especially if you're colouring in, you can just start and go across. But what happened was, it did take a few, I did a couple of photocopies and I put Thumper somewhere. I'm not sure where I put, I put the Thumper. It is the Thumper. This was the second one I did for Thumper. And I started thinking about um, the, the darker nose and under the snout and... Uh, but you don't have to do that, you can just kind of play with the colours. But it works a different way. If you work with them wet, you can't get... Um, I like working with them dry because what you can do is you can get some paint on your brush. You can see that. And you can kind of... The first few are darker and I'm working with this with the riggers because what happens is this is a dry way of working, water colouring, so you can, the, the dampness of the brush, you've got the tip at the bottom here, you've got, um, shaking this morning, you've got the colour at the end and a damp brush, and as you keep working the little, the little marks, the little places to colour in, it's getting paler because the colour's being used, and it's, it's opposite of the chameleon pens, is that the dampness is coming down the brush and diluting the colour so naturally you get a lovely grade of colour from dark to light but because I worked from a wet drop of ink I didn't get that natural so I kind of ruined this a bit I wanted it to be dark and to go light and because um, I'm not a perfectionist but I just love the fact that you can go from dark to light in one smooth you just keep teasing the colour across and eventually you'll end up with no colour at all and that is like it's blending but it's it's easy you're doing it with a paintbrush and it's the easiest way to blend so you can get some really nice grades of colour from very very vivid to very very pale and so I was so disappointed with that that I bought it again so that I can actually do the peacock correctly but what I normally do is photocopy them because I always agree I always think that a photocopy is is a wonderful thing and for the Colin Thompson one again I'm working dry almost the same dryness with a damp brush and you get a lovely watercolour effect and this took me two days to do but it's a photocopy I folded it up it's not precious I played with dark colours, I played with pale colours, I had a bit of a play, I made mistakes. But by the time I came to do the real book, 
sorry we live in an old cottage with squeaky doors <laughs> when i came to do the real page i'd ironed out all the problems i'd found out that that i'd found things that i'd missed i like the idea that all the wood is the same so that's all um burnt um burnt umber from a professional watercolour and so that would give me some nice greys but it's always going to be continuity which a bookshelf would do all the others are the Derwent watercolour pencils and you get the most beautiful highlights and lowlights by just stroking a pencil uh, by just stroking the paintbrush um, damp paintbrush and stroking across and it's a really easy way to work especially if your hands don't work well because all the pressure is in the bendy brush at the end and all the dampness in there and this is what does all the work and it's taken me a good few months to to get it to get it to three paintbrushes i basically use three riggers and they kind of there's a zero a two and a ten now they don't once you dip them back into water they go back to shape but that one's had a lot of use of it and I use these Artmaster pearls and they don't say they're riggers but it's a rigger and the riggers were used for the old masters for the um, for the old masters so that they could do the the sails and they could have the long lines of all the ropes and sheets and they wanted a continuous line they didn't want to kind of do a bit stop do a bit stop because obviously it wouldn't be a beautiful thin line and that's why the rigger works and this is why it works for this as well is you get the color at the end and this damp brush draws the color out continuously so you get a beautiful natural shade blending shade without doing any blending so i always recommend to, to photocopy and have a bit of a play and um, some colors are quite light but i didn't want them in the book other colors i thought and you can experiment you can use colors that you don't like you can use colors that you've never used before so I do like that way of working and that's kind of set me up for different ways of working in different books with the colors um, and as I said I do like working that way so when I went to the works I found these fab books which um, I will open this, I'm just looking for the pair of scissors, we have a pair of scissors here, and I just thought for two pounds, I mean these are pretty chunky books, <laughs> I do have my uh, This is probably one of my favourite sized books, is this. If I could have a sketchbook like this, this would be it. And it's um, it's six by seven and a quarter. And it's one and three quarters deep. And as I said, I bought this for my daughter. But I also thought, I should have bought two now. Because they're all black and white sketches. And it's quite shiny paper. She may not get this book. <laughs> she may not get this book. Um, because there's just so many black and white images to colour in. That I thought, I have to buy that for £2. That's a pretty amazing colour book. And of course, there's a set. If there's two of anything, you have to have the other one. And these are all florals. So again, this lends itself wonderful to some beautiful watercolouring. And since I've got pastels, uh, pastel pencils, the Derwent pastel pencils will go in a colour book, in my watercolour book. I just imagine that's going to be some quite nice. Um, designs in here and because it was two pounds you know I'm not precious so um, oh, it has that lovely book smell I can
can really see some gorgeous colours in this as well. And again, because I have my little book of colours, that's kind of me set off to, to some serious colouring and uh, it's not particularly chunky. <laughs> So that was my two pounds fine from the works. Um, and as I say, I wish now I'd got the other two, but there's some gorgeous fine designs. So I might actually, because I, what I'm doing at the moment, I've got, I didn't want to be so boring to use the same colours in the same colour books. So I've got the, the favourite ones for Dr. Martin's Hydras which is the aviary. I'm using professional watercolours in the Animorphia. I'm using the Derwent watercolour pencils because they're beautiful, beautiful colours and so easy to do a, a dry watercolour for the Colin Thompson Fantastique. And I now want to use pencil pastels in here. So my next, for the next pages in my book, I'm going to put these um, portrait set and they are the most put these out of the way because they are like, rather like book door stops <laughs> but these are beautiful pale colours and and I hadn't realised that I've never used them my daughter's used them once um, and I hadn't realised that of course I can get them in my book so purely by accident, I find my book, which should be right next to me. I take the cover off it so it looks different. But, um, as I was playing with watercolour, I played with the pastels. So I put them in the book as a paper palette. And I just think they are the most beautiful pale pastel colours and those colours there are wet are made from this little paper palette that I was practicing what I could get what colours I could get into my book. Typical can't find them. And I put them in paper pallets like this and stick them in the book. Just scribble them. And I did. I was playing about with uh, several different pencils. Um, and if they have a water brush mark on them, and they are water based, I tend to put them in. So that was what I was playing with. So I scribbled the pastel pencil. Just scribbled it on top. It is. It is loose. But because it has a plastic covering on it, it's fine. And just dampen brush. And that's what I got these beautiful colours with here. So again, I think I'm going to use in this particular book, which is... Oh, I'll take the cover off it now. Joanna... Joanna, uh, Joanna Basford, Magical Jungle. So this is going to be all um, pastels, I think all pastels but done in a watercolour way because professional pastels and very good quality pastels pencils are very well pigmented and it's the pigments that stay so they will be going in my book next because um, I was conscious of the fact that sometimes when you're colouring in you're colouring in the same book in the same way and I want to do things differently um, so that was about the little books. Um, that was about the books. Just a quick slurp of tea. And the other thing is, I was. This is a book that's arrived from um, that I bought, and I want to go into colour mixing, and as the old masters did, because sometimes you can forget so many chemicals and so many fake colours now that you can forget and do excuse me my, my slipping teeth so I wanted this book because it 
and I, at the moment I haven't the patience to read it. I've just skipped through it. But if you can read this, there's a whole section on classic colours, durability of cut pigments. Because, of course, you have to remember this is probably about 100 years old almost. There's the colour pigments as individuals. And then it names every single colour. So it goes into detail about how it's made, what it is. It's all the kind of compounds. And most of it is kind of way over my head. But just thinking about colour mixing and learning about the rose madder and what it is and, and, and it tells you how to use it and what it would be useful for. So it's a fab. A fab book, a rich, uh, uh, resembles them in beautiful rich hues and powdery, te powdery texture. And there's the cochineals, um, the lake colours, there's the cadmium reds. So it goes into quite a lot of detail and you'd be amazed how many colours there actually are. Um, so it says the neutral white goes into primary red, primary yellow and primary blue. Secondary orange, secondary green, and secondary purple. But then it goes to tertiaries. Uh, citrine, russet, and olive. And by mixing colours a different way, you get these colours as a third colour rather than as a sixth, seventh, or eighth. And you mix colours differently. And I found that's given me some gorgeous, really unusual colours. And then it talks about the semi-neutral brown, maroon and grey and then there's the neutral greys and black so i'll be doing a series on this when we do the art in the abbey because i think these colors are really going to come into their own because the abbey is very old selby abbey is very old and of course the old master's way of working is very old as well um, so that's another little book that i'm going to be working through Welcome to Bunny's Designs. So this is a, a live stream, a new stream. I, uh, I don't touch. Oh hi, Kerry. Don't touch chat. <laughs> Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I've just been going through um, some finds of uh, the works in the UK. There was this particular book, which was two pounds, but it has the. It's just full of designs to colour in. And also, I bought this for my daughter, but she may not get it because, again, it's just full of magical creatures to colour in. And there were two pounds from the works, which is pretty amazing, I think. <laughs> so, she may not get this yet, but we'll have, we'll have a go. So, I was quite impressed with that. I love the works, I have to say. I do love the works. I can never walk out of there without a book. So I'm going to go through um, in a series um, after Inktober, because Inktober is just taking it out of me at the minute. Um, but once we get that out of the way, I will be working my way through these colours in this book. And that will give an insight of how colours are made now, because they're so different and they're all fake. A lot of these pigments are poisonous. That's why a lot of artists went crackers. <laughs> um, Excuse me, my pint pot of tea. But it's interesting how they mix the colours. We're quite lucky. We've got safe pigments in safe binders, but we can still mix these beautiful colours the way they did. And I think that's quite going to... That, that transforms a colour book into something completely different. And it's also quite a nice book to go through as well. So that's my intention. Um, I have a confession as well about Inktober. Oh, sorry about that. I did need did need the, the drink of tea this morning. Um, oh, well, I was going to talk about colour. The other thing I was going to do is I found a little man who made one of these. So a friend of mine made this for me. And basically what you do is if you want to get an exact colour, if you're doing the Abbey and you want that exact colour, you mix it to how you think it is on your palette. And then you put a tiny drop of colour 
onto this um, plastic wipeable surface here. And you hold your arm dead straight and you look through this little hook here. And basically that's what you do. You have the colour on the end there. So where my finger is, red fingernail is there, is, that's the colour of the Abbey. And you can see if it's an exact match. So you can match your colour exactly to what you see, which is phenomenal, especially if you're doing life drawing or, or life painting or a flower, if you want the exact colour. So I'll be using this in the Abbey when we do art in the Abbey, live paintings. And um, I'll use that as an example. So if you wanted to get the exact colour of that red, you would paint the red on there and see if it's the same colour. And you can see that isn't the same colour. It's not the same colour on my fingernail. So you can change it. And that is the most amazing thing um, that I found. And the other thing is, so that's the colour to get an exact colour for when you're doing a, a, an oil painting or a, a watercolour. And then I will be using this as well. And this again works is you want to measure, um, you want to measure something. You measure it with your arm straight and then you set this to the dial you want. And when you draw, you make sure that that's the size. And that makes sure that when you start drawing, when you get to the end of the drawing, everything fits on the page, everything is in the right place. It's, um, I can't remember if it was Rembrandt with the perfect buttonhole. Somebody, oh, I have to remember, somebody painted the perfect buttonhole, but it was in the wrong place. And it's quite famous and I've forgotten about it because I've got short term memory loss. So I love this thing and you can buy them now. I think they're about, I don't think they're £10, but they may be from Derwent. Um, them two seconds. Because I bought my daughter's one each. I think it's Derwent. Yes, it is. So Derwent have brought out their own for measuring. So again, you set it to where you want it, uh, depending on the size of your paper. And then you measure that way. And then at this end, you know that that's got to be your actual drawing. So we'll be using that in the Abbey. So you will have all your measurements will be correct to get your drawing perfect. And then all your colours will be correct because you're going proper colour mixing. So that should be quite interesting. And the Abbey at Selby, I thought, would be the perfect place um, for some quite spectacular sketches and colours. Um, as I said, I think these are about, they won't be more than £10 because I'm a bit of a tight Yorkshire lass. Um, but for measuring, I taught my children to, to measure everything. Um, you used to use a ruler, but sometimes you forget. But if you're scaling down, this is what you need. Um, so those are the other things for the colour. And, and I think combined with this old book of of colour mixing, I think we're going to get some quite nice paintings. So that's for the Selby paint along. Um, and they need to stay together really because I can mix and match things. So if you've got any, any questions, pop them in caps. I don't, don't touch chat because I'll break it. <laughs> I don't do chat very well. So that leads me to the final thing here. So let me just tell me and see how long I've been because I lose track of time quite easily. Oh, that's just a little one. So that would be good. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit more on colour and then I found all these kicking about from there are all sorts of children's ones. Um, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on colour pages. I mean, I think this one was a pound. This was a pound and uh, I haven't been in these for a long time because I've got obsessed with all the, the other colouring sections. So if we pick one of these. Yep. 
have a look. Pick one up we can do. A lot of these you don't like, so I'm, I'm saving them for cutting up and doing things. And... I'm looking for simple floral, but I can't find one. That's rather a large one. Isn't that strange? You can't find anything you want when you want it. Well, that's got different. That's got some different shades. I'm just going to pull that one out of there. Oops, and I haven't made a very good job of that. One. But I wanted to show that you don't. You know, I bought this from the pound shop. I think this was a, a few pounds. This is quite a nice set. I bought that from the uh, Hobbycraft. I think I bought that from Hobbycraft. We used to have lots of art shops in England. Now that's an old set, and this is an old children's set as well. If we get this one out, now the brush is terrible, I have to say. And I've actually trapped that one. See, this is why I don't do things because I can't get things opened. And for some reason, that paintbrush has got ruined. Um, but a few pounds you can get a paintbrush and you can just colour and this is from the pound shop and you don't need to do any colour mixing you can just wet this and just start painting I suppose we don't really want a blue don't really want a blue uh, so you don't have to have and again you've just got to practice not going over the lines just with any other paint now these are a little bit sticky I have to say but some of the paint pound ones that you can get in tubes they're quite okay yeah, they're okay but if you want to just steal your children's and I'm trying to keep in frame um They've got some really nice colours. You know, they're not that grotty. They're they're just nice, uh, and and you can do this with your children as well. Uh, and of course, there's always something nice about children playing with the same paints as mummy and daddy. So that's quite good, or granny. And you just have to colour in. But there's no reason you don't need expensive paints. I always try with cheap ones. Um, I always try with cheap ones first because there's a tight Yorkshire lass. I don't like. Uh, I don't like waste, and it's nice sometimes to play. That's why I do the photocopy, because you can play, you can make a mess, you can put colours in things that you don't normally use, and then you can think, well, actually. I tried that, don't like it, or oh, I've tried that, and I actually like that better than working. I've done that, and that's how things evolve. You change because you you you're learning all the time, and different things appeal to you all the time, and so things evolve, and you decide that well, I quite like working this way in this book, and that way in another book, and this is just a flat colour, but it's quite pretty. It's colouring still still chilling out still just having that that moment where i'm playing with color and of course especially with the children's here there's some really nice bright colors that you can just carry on playing with um i mean it would probably take me a good 10 minutes to, to mix that color it's it's not an easy a mint is not an easy color to mix because of depends on which blue and green you use so of course here you've got these lovely I call them fake colours, but I don't mean that detrimental. I just mean they're not, they're not nearest the natural pigment. Um, and as I say, you can just really, even though this was a pound and this was a pound, you can just start playing and it's 
and get some really nice effects and that's quite a, like a mint as well as that one it's just a, a little bit greeny and if you put the water into these properly and sprayed them they would constitute better and then you can kind of push the paint around oops a little bit I haven't got a lot of room here um, but you don't need to buy 12 pound tubes of paint I try to buy things when they're cheap um, and I say you could you can do this with so I quite like that but I'm going to use the other one as well I think. I'm going to use this one here and the more you put the water into them the better they behave but you can tell there is a binder in here but you know it's it's from the pound shop it's still practicing going in with the lines it's still making colors making color choices putting colors next to each other which is what it's a lot of it's all about sometimes if you put a color that you love next to another color it will turn out horrid um, I'm not even thinking about color at the moment but again you know this this there's four greens in here and a mint so there's five oh there's six greens so um, you could get some really nice leaves on here it's getting a bit better now because I'm mixing it better again you see I haven't played with these so you need to play with them to find out what they do and still practicing going within the lines still practicing the color and at the same time just having a play and chilling out so there's some really quite nice colors in here actually if you really wanted to get and I've still got three three shades of purple there because of the amount of water that I've mixed in so again you don't have to think oh I've got to do this and I've got to have I probably should have sprayed it better and then that would have been quite nice but and you've still got to practice going in between the lines so I wanted to show that you didn't really need very expensive things you can play with these so they were from the pound shop and they are a little bit sticky but you know that's the binder that's used um, these are really beautiful these I have to say quite like these um, if you're doing can you see they're not too bad aren't they some really pretty colours in there again and here's another I mean this is quite really thin paper this but again it's not it's buckled a little bit but you know it's, it's colouring in two pounds I think these are three or four pounds I don't think they're doing five because it's a tight Yorkshire lass um, and these are like a pastel shimmer they are quite nice I'm just going to change the brushes because I'm conscious of the fact I'm tapping in there every five minutes um, but again um, let's put the bird the right way up we have a green leaf so if we just touch the green and I was going to try and put these into my little book of colours but it's a thin it's a thin palette so I don't really need to do that but I think they are actually in there so but this is quite nice and again just stroking the colour and this is probably the paintbrush for this really um, but I quite like working with them because when they bend they don't hurt the hands so I am a bit of a rigor snob I have to say um, but again just stroking the colour in and these have got a, sh a shimmer to them and they're really pretty now I am working a lot wetter than I normally do but this is what normal colouring is if you stroke the colour across there I'm just going to swap paintbrushes that is a little bit this is a little bit uh, oops Too 
too much. This is probably a normal brush, cheapy brush from, obviously this is the Cotman one, but it's still not too expensive. Um, but that's probably a better brush, not, not a rig. And there's a lot of colour on there and again just stroking the colour in. And it's really, really shimmery this, very shimmery. So you can get different effects. And this is a very, very cheap book. So the pages are very thin. Um, the pages are very thin, but there's a lovely shimmer on there. And pastel colours as well, pastel shades. So, And because I've got a lot of colour on here, I'm just going to get rid of this on here. So again, these are two or three pounds. And the technique is the same. A damp brush, not too wet. Try and get off as much colour as you can back onto the palette. Two reasons. One is you don't waste it. Oops, sorry. And the other one is they look quite nice. Um, and then we can go in with this colour here. And kind of... So there's lots of things. And of course, then you can mix the two together if you really wanted to. And these brushes hold quite a lot of colour. And when it gets too dry, you just kind of reconstitute it back. And then just follow the line. And again, these are really pretty, pretty pastel shimmers. I can't remember what they call these, but they're very pretty. So you could just take this little palette here and, and you bulk on your way. So I'm just having a bit of a play with some cheap, cheapy colouring books and um, and fairly inexpensive things. Um, so that was the shimmer one, and I think that's actually quite pretty. So as I think there was there were three or four pounds from um, Hobbycraft. So you now we've got the pound shop and the pound shop paper. We've got two or three pounds. And then these are the children's ones, so I'll, I'll keep on that one there. I mean, these are the kiddies ones. I don't know where these have been. Find them. Oh, not those. <laughs> I think they need to be thrown away. This is a, a kiddie set that's been about, I think. And again, I think you spray, if I can find my book, I think you can spray. To reconstitute them back and then that's going to make that a little bit easier. And just take the colour off and start colouring in. And these are quite bright as well. So you don't need expensive things. And then, you know, if you play with these for a bit, and so especially if you can play with the, the kids as well, if you're going to colour in, and say the children will love the fact that mummy's using your paints or you're using the same as her, because uh, they feel grown up then. It's like my children were always like, oh, mummy can't play with mummy's paints. And they were always kind of a bit... But I always used to buy cheaper ones for them. And if you want to, you can just put a little bit of dark green into there. Not doing this particularly neat. Um, but you can get some really lovely colours. I've just realised that actually is a lily. It's not a leaf, but they're quite nice. And again, colouring in, chilling out a couple of pounds. And um, that's an old an old set. So I just wanted to show that. But at the moment, of course, especially like the places like the works and things, you can get some really nice colour books. Um, and then when you've had a play and you've got that little bit more confidence, and then you want you might do it and think that you, you might start painting, colouring in and decide that actually you don't like it. It's not for you. It's too slow, it's too boring. And you haven't wasted a lot, you've just wasted a couple of pounds. That's all you've wasted. Um, and then you can pass them on to the children, of course. 
which is thought was quite good. So um, that was my little rant about cheapy paints and pound shop paints. So I'll stop that video um, and then I'm going to do um, some sketching, I think, because I'm a bit behind. And I also want to colour in in this um, oops, gorgeous Joanna Bassfield. Bassfield, sorry. Magical Jungle. So um, I'll stop the video. So thank you for watching. This is a live stream for you stream and also recorded for YouTube as well.